So, if you've not been living under several heavy rocks the past month, Deltarune Chapter 2 has just released. And as you might expect, this video is delving deep into Toby Fox's newest instalment, so there's major spoilers for Deltarune Chapter 2 and probably Chapter 1 and Undertale. Go and play these before jumping in here, because I don't know what you're doing here if you haven't. Now, since I can assume you've played Chapter 2, the best part is, I don't need to go into detail just what happens in the story here. Because, well, a lot of what happens in the main storyline, if you can call it that, and I mean that in the absolute best way, this whole thing feels like a pantomime gone completely off the rails, it doesn't seem to matter. Much. Queen and her dark fountain, the cyber world, even new lighteners, Noel and Birdly. We're not going to focus on them today, and you know exactly who we're aiming towards in this video. He's loud, he's small to know, he'll take your chromer before you have the chance to say what the hell is a chromer, and he's a chilling, fascinating look into what Deltarune has in store for us all, and perhaps the pinnacle of the unique, terrifying story it's presented so far. Yeah. Okay, let's rewind the clock, because if we want to understand why Spamton has caught the fan base's heartstrings, myself included, so badly, we need to go back to the setup. Back to chapter one. Chaos, chaos. Jevil, the secret boss of Deltarune chapter one, which, in my opinion, is still highly enjoyable, but does pale in comparison to its successor. Blah, beside the point. My point is, Jevil set the bar for Deltarune and secret bosses. It's understandable to think that if Chapter 1 has a super difficult secret boss battle, then surely Chapter 2 will. People are already predicting what Chapter 3's will be. And hey, we're probably right. But Spamton takes that secret boss concept and cranks it up a few notches. We first meet to this powerless puppet after a very fun car ride with the best character in the history of anything Queen, where we go through the usual motions of battle. Dialogue introducing the character, we go to fight, either beating the slime out of them or finding a more peaceful solution before scooting off. Two things. First, the parallels with and superiority over Jevil are immediately clear. This isn't just a mystery man locked away within a completionist cage. This is a character we're familiar with, and it's only going to get more familiar as the game continues. Second, despite everything I just said about Spammy's introduction being as basic as its skeleton, which is true, he does have the most curious effect on those playing. Watch any Let's Play in DR2 and you'll see people are unnerved, disturbed even. They know that something isn't quite right. And Despite all the jokes and laughs you'd expect from a Toby Fox character, there's there's something weird going on here. And it's the fact that he knows. He's the first enemy in Deltarune to mention your soul at all, and he seems very, very sure of the power it possesses. A concept not touched on since, well, Undertale. The series just excels at emphasising the relationship between in-game characters and the player, you. Just look at the likes of Flowey, Sans, Chara, and now Chris. The fact that this guy is this guy is bringing up gameplay elements you've likely not heard of for years, concepts that just don't seem to exist here. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. After the battle, it's somewhat difficult, especially if that one bloody attack, but it's definitely doable. The next time you see Spamton is way back at the Trashlands. In his little shop. Well, it's certainly the least popular, well, least discussed and animated of his three big moments, it's undeniably important. After all, here's where we learn about Spamton, Mike, friendship, and some, oh, you know, casual horror filled moments. As you do, Toby, as you do. Chris leaving his friends behind whenever he goes to meet the puppets isn't really relevant to this video. But it's something I've been really curious about and never really seen anyone mentioning it in speculation. Your move, theorists. But before we move on to... 
let me just emphasize why Spamton Neo is so effective a fight before we battle him. After all, the video is called Why Spamton Works. It would be a shame to go through it without emphasizing why this spooky little man works so well. And it's because we know him. Again, it's not like Jevil, who we just meet for the first time before he kicks our collective arse. It's, well, it's reminiscent of an Undertale genocide route. And not even to mention the fact that he sees Chris as a friend, equal thing. The point is, we know this character, so going up against them, while exciting, is definitely going to be hard to finish if Toby's made anything of a precedent. And oh boy, what a finish. Spamton Neo. A design, a theme, a name to drag you right back into Undertale like never before. And yet, so much more than that. How many fan-made battles, how many fan-made themes have been made of a true fight against Metacon's deadliest form? I think this is the closest we'll ever get, and the sequel part's thrilling and tense. But there's more to his design than a callback to Undertale's biggest missed opportunity. Those dangling arms and legs, those strings looking like something out of the Matrix. There's something horrendously ironic that the more free Spamton tries to make himself, the more he just becomes a simple puppet. He's not free, the only change is that you can see his strings. Now, before we get too depressing, did I mention his theme? His theme? Oh, and can I just quickly mention that the most legitimate chills I've gotten from Deltarune so far is this little line of Heaven, are you watching? I don't think I'll go into much speculation on what it could mean, but the simple fact that we don't exactly know what he's referring to makes it so much more effective. Ish. Now, the fight itself is simple. It doesn't really break any rules like, say, Jevil, Sans, or even Asgore. The only real notable part of the gameplay is the return of the yellow soul form. How? Who knows? But the real thing to watch in this final bout is the dialogue. Everything spammed in Neo, the form with the famously high defence, is directed towards Chris. Not you, Chris. I don't think any boss character in the game Everything from Jevil to Chaos King to Queen mentions Chris by name more than once or twice. He's funny, he's creepy as sin, and he knows what's going on. People today, myself included, are very quick to say that originality is dead. That anything, anything you can think of has already been done before. Fortnite is just Minecraft Hunger Games, which is just the Hunger Games, which is just Battle Royale, which was just... You get the idea. But a character breaking the fourth wall by trying to reach out to the character we control, almost like it's demonic possession by a god? That is original. That is genius, and that is why Spamton works so brilliantly well. He's someone we all assume at first to be a threat. I mean, <laughs> what could be more suspicious than a big nosed salesman obsessed with making a deal with you? We all know how well that usually turns out. 
And after the last secret boss was a being of pure chaos incarnate, surely this one would just be a super difficult, super cryptic big boss to fight, right? But he's not. Spamton's not the villain of the story. If anything, he's trying to save Chris. And Chris, you can see, he basically lets him do it. The one he's trying to defeat is you, the player. And can we talk about the ending of that bout? As soon as you get to the final string, it's like watching a slow motion rainbow car crash. It's beautiful, it's horrible, and you just can't take your eyes away from the inevitable crash. There's not too much to comment on after that. Spamton, tangled in strings forevermore, acknowledges he never really had a chance to begin with. He becomes our second mysterious crystal. Chris gives us horrible chills, and Ralsei acts extremely sus, both deserving of their own talk one day, but we're focusing on our dear old puppets right now. And now, I think it's time to move to Snowgrave, Spamton's final appearance. Of course, we've covered the final points of this battle already, and to be entirely honest, the whole fight ends up being more of a focus on a different trio. Chris, Noel, and you, the player. But this final clash does give us a glance into one of the more memorable aspects of Spamton's dialogue, and what that actually means. I can make block. <laughs> it's... well, it's choice. I thought it over for what else it could be, but this battle, and an awesome reddit theory I've put in the link of the description along with everything else I've used for this video, but it's pretty clear through this encounter that Hyperlink Blocked is supposed to be some kind of choices or decisions or free thinking. It doesn't have to be one exact thing, you get the idea. Of course, this is where Spamton is gravely heh, mistaken. Chris isn't in more control in the Snowgrave route. If anything, he's in severely less control than before. We, the player, are twisting and moulding the story as best we can to our old, curious, bloody desires, if that reminds you of anything. The reason Snowgrave is so hard to access and begin, it seems, is because it really is never meant to happen within the game's lore. In this scenario, the player is sidestepping the fact that we cannot murder anyone within the world of Deltarune. We can't. But she can. Whew, got a bit sidetracked there, this is a Spamton video. Point is, Hyperlink Blocked is choice, the very thing that Spamton wants, and the very thing he'll lose any chance whatsoever of when he becomes an NPC in Ralsei's world when the fountain is destroyed. And the very thing he can never have. That's why Spamton works, because we start off assuming he's going to be a bad guy to survive cool attacks from and slowly wear down. We let him take down our defences and befriend us, or <laughs> befriend Chris, but then it smacks us across the face with this tragic tale of a video game salesman gone rogue and trying to help our own playable character not fall into that same pit. He's insanely unique. It's no wonder he's struck such a chord in the Deltarune, uh, Undertale, Toby Fox community and elsewhere. I have not seen one of this man's characters spark off like this since Sans himself. I'm going to go ahead and guess we won't see our old pal Spamton in the game after this. His sad little tale is told. But while he's far from a big shot within the world of Deltarune, at least until chapter 3 or 3 and 4 and 5 all at once release, he's certainly the big shot of our hearts. Even if Queen is superior, good night!